Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at the Lake Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you join us today, and I want to welcome every one of you to Kids Connection. I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait for you to be here at Kids Connection again. But until then, I hope you are still being good boys and girls at home. Last week, we celebrated Easter, and we even had communion with Pastor James. What an amazing experience that was. It was very emotional remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, for me and for you. Now this week, we're going to continue the story after Easter. But before we get there, we're going to sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. And it's amazing. Sing with us. Wow, that was such a fun song. Did you have fun? I did. And thank you for singing with us. It's always good to know that you enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program right now. We ask that you be with them, be with mom and dad, and be with us as we worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have your mom or your dad or your grandparents baked bread at home for you. Yummy! That smell of fresh bread is awesome! In our mission story today, we're going to hear a story where people use fresh baked bread to share the love of Jesus with others. Let's watch our mission story. In the still, dark, and early mornings, flour and water meet. They rise with yeast and are shoved in an oven to be transformed by heat. The aroma fills the air, sending an irresistible invitation to mouth-watering delights. One by one, people come to order, to socialize, and laugh. Every day, people of all ages and different ethnicities line up at this bakery, eager to savor delicious bread. Making bread takes time and patience. It takes loving hands to mix ingredients and press them together until the dough is ready to rise and grow. So it is with people. It takes time and patience to cultivate trust and friendship, to warm their lives and invite them to follow Jesus. At the Trapezia Global Mission Urban Center of Influence in Bulgaria, staff members offer visitors more than food. Here, people find room to interact and participate in a variety of courses and activities. As they make new friends, visitors are invited to become volunteers themselves. This way, they can give back and help others too. Dimitur is a regular volunteer who found purpose in Trapezia by tutoring math. There are good people here, and I developed good relationships with different people. So I want to give my best to others. I feel a strong desire to learn more about God and the Bible. I have this idea that I have to help, and if I can, I'm going to do it. I am not a math teacher. I'm an engineer. But here, I help kids with math. Dimitur travels 10 kilometers every day. Sometimes he comes on foot. He started as a customer, then he became a volunteer, and now he is a baptized Seventh-day Adventist. Like Dimitur, many people who come to Trapezia find the bread of life. The owners of Trapezia have seen how centers of influence like this can work as a platform to engage the community and form friendships God gave us this place to keep us close to people. God showed us that we needed a place where people felt accepted and at home. That's why we established a bakery, because it smells like home. In Bulgaria, people eat a lot of bread. This is how Christ worked. He was close to people. He offered them the bread of life. He healed them and took care of them. And we want to do the same. The leaders at Trapezia invite you to pray for this growing group of new believers. Please pray for this urban center of influence and many others around the world that find creative ways to introduce people to Jesus. Thank you for supporting urban centers of influence through Global Mission. Now as always, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above and donate to the missionaries. Now our offering this Saturday is going to help places like the bakery so they can continue to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, how have you been doing? What are you doing at home lately? Are you enjoying a new way of school or spending some time with mom or dad or grandparents? I know that some of you don't go to school yet, but in a way, we're all experiencing something different. Just remember something, you're always on my mind. I miss you guys. And I am so happy that we get to spend this time at Kids Connection every week. Don't forget to come back to the Kids Connection page later in the week and check out additional material just for kids. We have new videos for children's worship, fun activity pages, and much more. After you watch today's video, just scroll down to the bottom of this page where you can see a lot more to do. 
Now, last week we learned in our Sabbath school the story of Easter and that Jesus died and rose again. Today we're going to learn what happened after that, after his resurrection. But before we get to that, I think my friend Claudio is here. It was his birthday last week, and let's see what he has to say. Come on. Well, hello, boys and girls. Here. I want you to meet my friend Claudio. Hi Claudio, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you, thank you for asking. Thanks for coming here today. I hear that you had a birthday party last week? Yes, I had a birthday party. Oh, that's that. birthdays are, are the best. Did you get a lot of presents? Yes, lots of presents. Good, good, I'm so excited, so happy for you. Happy birthday, by the way. What did you get? Lots of presents. Oh, really? Okay, okay. And and what was your favorite? Mm, I, it was a soccer ball. Oh, really? Oh, soccer is my favorite. I love soccer. Do you have your ball with you? Yes, I do. Can I see it? No. No? Why? Because it's mine. Oh, I know it's yours. I know it's yours. But I, I, I just want to see it because it was your favorite, and I want to see it. No. Oh, come on, Claudio. Let me see. Boys and girls, do you want to see his soccer ball? Mm. Just a little bit? Can we see it just for a little bit? Mm. Okay. But it's mine. Oh, I know. I understand. It's your ball. Okay. Do you need help? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. He doesn't need help. I think you do need help. No. Whoa. That is such a nice ball. Can I tell No. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. It's mine. I, I know it's yours, but I, I like to see. I like to kick the ball. I like to bounce the ball a little bit. Can I do that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, Claudio. Okay, but you know, it's, it's much better when we play soccer with two people. No, uh, but it's mine. It's... I understand. It's your ball. It's your ball, and, and it's a nice ball. Mm. Claudio, can, can we try to play together? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Okay, Claudio, I, I, I know. I'm not going to take the ball from you. I just want to play with you because I like soccer. No, I don't think so. Yes, Claudio, I promise I'm not going to take it from you. Promise? Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Claudio. Okay. Okay, okay. So you kick it to me, and I'll kick it back to you, and I'll hit it back to you, okay? Here we go. Oh. Whoa. It is such a nice ball. Thank you. Here we Here. go. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Claudio. Oh, there. Ah, nice. Oh, nice. Okay, Claudio. I'm going to hit it to you. You hit your head, okay? Okay. Oh, cool. That was nice. Here, let me try it. Ah. ah, good catch. Good catch. See, Claudio, wasn't it nice to play together? I guess. Yeah, it's always nice to play soccer together because, you know, when you play by yourself, you have to run after the ball. You have to chase it. Sometimes you kick the ball far away. And when you play with someone, you kick that ball to the person and the person kicks back to you. That wasn't that bad, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't take your ball, like I promised. Yeah, I guess you didn't. Yes, Claudio. Thank you for letting me play with you. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Bye. It was good seeing you, Claudio. Bye-bye. I'll see you later. Okay. Say bye-bye to the boys and girls. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. 
Wow, did you guys see that? Claudio didn't want to share his soccer ball with me. He thought I was going to take his ball. Have you ever seen anybody who doesn't like to share things? Or that knows something so good and they don't want to share with anybody? In today's lesson, we're going to learn something that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. Something that we need to share with everyone. And I hope you don't do like Claudio. Keep it to yourself. I hope that today's lesson you shared with at least one person this week. Just one. And now, let's sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for all the boys and girls, and moms and dads who are watching this program today. Bless them, keep them safe, and thank you so much because you died on the cross for us. Help us to share this love with others, with at least one person this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. 
and share the lesson you're about to hear with at least one person this week. We have a lot of things happening at our Kids Connection page. So make sure you come back this week and check out additional materials on the bottom of this page, graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. We have crafts, we have safe games for kids, and children's worship new videos. And all this is specially made for you. I hope to see you again next week for another Kids Connection program. Thanks for watching today. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Hi, kids. Welcome to our lesson this morning. We're glad you're joining us. Did you have fun at Kids Connection? I'm sure you did. So we're going to start a lesson with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful this morning. We are grateful because you took care of us during the week. Please help us so that we can understand your love this morning, so that we can learn a little bit more about the love you have for us and how you want us to share the love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today we're going to study another lesson about Jesus. You know, the past lessons, we were following along the life of Jesus. And I'm sure that last week was not a very happy story for you. For you. Probably you felt a little bit sad. I did. But you know, I have great news. Last week was not the end of the lesson of the life of Jesus. Last week was just the beginning of something amazing that was about to happen. So today, we're going to study that lesson about what was the amazing thing that started last week's lesson. You know, Jesus walked on this earth for, I would say, around 31 years. 31 years that he spent teaching and showing others how to love their neighbors, how to share the word of God with others, how to humble ourselves. Jesus had great teachings. His ministry only lasted probably three years. But you know, those three years were amazing. I would have loved to be his disciple. Imagine seeing all the miracles. Imagine seeing how someone was not walking and suddenly started walking. What is your favorite miracle story? I'm sure you have something. Do you have someone beside you? Can you share that story with someone? What is your best story of the miracles that we have read about Jesus? Hmm, I have a couple of them. You know, my favorite story is when he calmed the sea. That is for sure my favorite story because for me, it's an assurance that no matter how bad the seas are, no matter if I'm going through a lot of trouble, I know that Jesus will come in and calm the storm. But you know what? All the stories are amazing. And I'm sure you have a favorite one because all of them are amazing and they all teach us different things. Let me share a word with you. Hearing. What is hearing? You know, nowadays, Facebook is very popular. And when something happens in one part of the world, suddenly it becomes viral. That means that it's everywhere. So you'll see videos, you'll hear about it, and something, something that happened all the way in India, all of a sudden becomes popular in all the world, even though we're not close to India. And I'm sure if this is the time where Je when Jesus was living, I'm sure his name would have been all over Facebook. I'm sure all over it, it would say, Jesus heals a crippled man. Jesus hears the deaf. Jesus is with the lepers. Jesus calms the sea. Wow. Imagine 
how the people felt in those days. Everyone wanted to meet Jesus. Everyone wanted to hear about him. And you know, that was the purpose. Jesus wanted everyone to have a chance to hear about his love. He was here so he can show us a new way of living, how to love others, how to humble ourselves, how to ask everything in prayer. You know, he left so many things behind. And that is why Jesus wanted everyone to hear about him. He will never do anything unless he gives everyone a chance to hear about his love. But because of his popularity, his name got to a very high place of power. Government officials were not happy. A lot of groups were not happy with what he was doing. They thought Jesus was instigating to a revolution. Jesus was not here to do that. But they falsely accused him of instigating people. So they took him to a high court so they can judge him. They were not sure how to judge him because there was nothing wrong with him. They could not find a fault in him. But they pressed charges. And ultimately they said, well, let the people decide what they want to do. And the consequence was that he was crucified. He was crucified by the people that he came to die for. But even the people that accused him, Jesus was still loving them and still dying for them. He was still making sure that the sacrifice was made so that they can be saved. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for everyone so that everyone had the same opportunity to be saved but he died on the cross he died on a friday evening and that was the most obscure day in the life of the disciples and his mom also they were very very sad but you know i remember that when jesus was here on earth he said I will die and I will rise from the dead. But at that point, they were so confused. They could not think how those words had meaning. They could not understand that. So they buried Jesus inside a stone. Officials were very scared that someone might try to steal his body. So they put guards outside a tomb 24 seven. They rolled the stone and they put, they had put the body inside and covered the tomb with the stone. A very heavy stone, I can imagine. So no one could go there and no one can easily go in and out because there were guards. As the guards were standing there, probably falling asleep, probably one watching and the other one sleeping. Suddenly, there was a big earthquake. A big earthquake happened. And the tomb started rolling. The guards could not even see. The guards fell on the ground. They could not defend themselves. Even though they were very strong guards, they could not do nothing against the power of God. God said, son, it's time to come out. And God called his son out from the tomb. And that is the most amazing thing. Jesus had risen from the dead. When he rose from the dead, Jesus made the final miracle. Demonstrated he had the ability to govern death. He had power over death. And there was nothing that could hold him in a tomb. But remember the disciples? They were really sad that Jesus had died. 
So women, early morning, it was a tradition to wrap the bodies, bodies in scent. So the women, early morning, went to take some. And you know, just to think about what is a scent, go to the kitchen and find a spice. Can you do that? Go to the kitchen and find the spice. Any spice. It could be pepper, it could be salt, it could be oregano, it can be any scent. So bring it over. My favorite scent, it's onion salt. Ah, I love that smell. Mm, it smells delicious. And in bread, it smells delicious. But you know, the woman that day, they were carrying lavender. They were carrying, I don't know, all types of scents that they used in those days. So the woman had all these smells attached to them. Because that's another one of her senses. To smell the fragrance. They wanted to be able to do that. As soon as they got to the tomb, there were angels in the tomb. And they said, woman, what are you doing here? Why are you looking among the dead, the one who is alive? And the woman were very sad. And they said, we're looking for our master. We're looking for Jesus. We brought this for him. He's not here anymore. And the women were puzzled. They could not believe if they should feel joy or concern of what was going on. No one was there to explain what was going on. So they hurried back to the disciples and they said, you need to come with us. Jesus' body is gone. <gasps> so some of us need to be able to touch, to believe. Some of us need to be able to see, to believe. And God knows us very well. So Jesus appeared to his disciples. And you know, when he was walking towards the road of Emmaus, one of his disciples said, well, I need to touch you. I need to see your hands. And Jesus said, of course, touch my hands. Here they are. I am risen. Believe in me because I have conquered death. Everything that I suffered was worth it because now the humanity can have hope. And you know what? I wrote down a name of who Jesus died for. Do you want to see the name? Let me show it to you. You. Jesus died for you. So that you can have eternal life. So that you can be with Jesus in heaven and with all your loved ones. Jesus came to earth to show us a new way of living. And to show us that we were not created for this earth. That's why sometimes we don't fit because we were not created for this earth. Last week was a sad story. But that was not the end of it. Remember Jesus rose from the dead. He is risen and he is waiting for us. And now we're ready to re read our memory verse for today. And I have asked Ixwell if they could help us out. Ixwell, can you help us? We're going to be reading Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. Can you grab a Bible so we can read it? Let's read it. So God lifted him up to the highest place. God gave him the name that is above every name. When the name of Jesus is spoken, everyone will kneel down to worship him. Everyone in heaven and on earth and under the 
earth will kneel down to worship him. Everyone's mouth will say that Jesus Christ is the Lord, and God the Father will receive the glory. Amen. Thank you for reading this. He is risen, and he will come back for us. We're waiting for him, and we're excited to know that that day will come soon. Let's bow our heads so we can uh, finish our class for today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you because Jesus risen from the dead. Thank you because we know that you will come for us. Thank you because we have hope. Thank you because we have love. We pray that every kid that is hearing the lesson for today is blessed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, kids. Thank you for being with us today, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Happy Sabbath to everyone.